I have not only had more requests for data interpretation, questions and explanations, I also got a recent request yesterday from Annika Jabin to say, can I cover more crazy hard questions? So what I thought I'd do is kill two birds with one stone, and that's what this video is about. I've selected three data interpretation questions from Magoosh, and they are in ascending order of difficulty, starting off with an easy question, then a medium one, and then a hard one that I think about 90% of students wouldn't get right without a bit of tutoring. I still like the first two questions though, because they exemplify the type of questions you get in data interpretation. In fact, each question broadly represents a different category of data interpretation question. The first one is fairly straightforward, but involves percentages. And many students aren't quite as fluent with percentages as they need to be for data interpretation and using the calculator. The second one is all about not being intimidated by complicated looking graphs and lots of words. Often the question is a lot easier than it looks in data interpretation. And the third question, as I say, is quite a hard question that many of you might not know how to do, involving ratios and percentages. So let's get to it. We're gonna do these three questions and I'm gonna explain as I go with the visuals on the screen. Okay, this first question they say is easy and it gives us a chart of animals and the percentages that each animal is. And then the question is, if there are 44 leopards at the zoo, what is the zoo's total animal population? A classic question. They've told us the number of leopards and they've told us that leopards represent 16% of the animals in the zoo. You have to know what to do here. Just quickly, there are two approaches. If you're very confident, you can go straight to the answer. If you know that 44 leopards represent 16% of the total, we do 44 divided by 0.16. That's if you know a certain amount equals a certain percentage, you do the amount divided by the decimal. And that gets you straight to the total amount. Now some of you will go, hold up Philip, I don't know that method. It is in one of my other videos on percentage tricks. But if you don't know that method, we can do the slightly longer way with an equation. Those 44 leopards equals 16% of the total. So if we call the total T, for example, we can write the equation 44 equals 0.16 T. And then how would we solve that equation? To find T, divide both sides by 0.16, giving us the total. And I've just done that on my calculator and I got 275. Notice you don't even have to write the zero in the calculator for the GRE. You can literally just type in 44 divided by 0.16 and try to use your keyboard to type in the numbers rather than click, click, four, four divided by. I see a lot of students do that. No, get used to the keyboard, type it in, 44 forward slash, which divide 0.16, enter equals. Get it done in five seconds rather than 20 seconds. That's a key tip. Get used to using the keyboard instead of pecking away like a woodpecker by clicking every single button. And we get the total being 275. And obviously we can quickly check if that's correct. And it is correct. Okay, now the next one, medium level. Let's see if we can fit this in on one screen. And as you can see, the graph looks complicated. We've got millions of dollars on the left, thousands of students on the right, and we've got quite a complicated looking graph. And beneath it, quite a few words. But here's the really important thing. We're not gonna be intimidated, are we? You ask yourself right now, are you intimidated by this question? I really hope you said no, because we've got to overcome that intimidation and just trust that the question is easier than it looks. So you're agreeing with me, I can see you, you're nodding your head, this is gonna be an easy question, isn't it? Yes, good. Okay, let's prove that. In the diagram above, each of 15 private colleges is represented by a dot and an X on a vertical line. A dot and X, fine. The X indicates the college's annual income from tuition in 2008, so the X's are tuition. The dot, above or below the same dashed vertical line, indicates the college's annual income from investments. 
So the dot is in investments. The X, the cross, is tuition. Sounds good so far. The base of the vertical dashed line indicates the number of students at that college in 2008. So down here, the X axis is the number of students. Cool. For how many colleges shown is the investment, which was the dot, more than double the college's tuition, which was the cross. So all those words, all this fancy graph, just to ask you, for which of these lines is the dot, the investments, more than double the cross, the tuition? Literally, we just have to look at the graph and say for which of these 15 lines is the dot more than double the X? That's crazy, right? All of those words, fancy, fancy graph, so much intimidation. Many students would have skipped the question. They just want to know, is the dot double the cross? Now, obviously not for these ones on the right, because the cross is higher than the dot, or these ones in the middle, because the dot is so close to the cross, it's not double. And I think the first one is obviously more than double. This line on the far left, the dot is way more than double the cross. But what about the second line? It looks close, it doesn't look like double, but we can quickly check. The dot, I would say, is about 480, and the cross is about 250. So it's not more than double. So there's only one line there where the dot is more than double the cross, and that's all they were asking. So the answer to this question would be, there's just one college where the investment, the dot, is more than double the tuition, the cross really shouldn't have been intimidated by that question. And the answer is one, yes. Now, what about the last question, the hard question? This one, I will admit, is hard if you don't know the method. Of course, if you do know the method, even this one isn't that hard. What does the question say? The following chart shows the population of Jenkinsville and the number of televisions in the town through the middle part of the 20th century. Okay, population, TVs, not too bad. The ratio of people to televisions, people to televisions, in Jenkinsville decreased by approximately what percent from 1955 to 1960? So the ratio of people to televisions decreased by what percent from 1955 to 1960? The last two rows. Now, what makes this question slightly harder is that students aren't used to thinking of a ratio as a number. How can a ratio decrease by a percent? Imagine a ratio goes from 4 to 1 to 3 to 1. By what percent has the ratio reduced? Or a harder example, if the ratio has gone from 7 to 3 to 6 to 2, by what percent has the ratio increased? How do we work that out? Ratios don't increase or decrease by a percentage. That's what many students would think. I'm here to tell you a simple tip. A ratio can be expressed as a number by simply dividing the two amounts. The ratio four to one could be expressed as a number by doing four divided by one. Now it's important to get the order of the division right. It depends on the question. They're asking about the ratio of people to televisions. So we do people divided by televisions to express a ratio as a number. Let's do that for 1955. You could quickly pause and tell me the ratio as a number if you want. Well, the ratio of people to televisions in 1955 is 1,200 divided by 80, which quickly in my head, although you could use a calculator, is 15. So that's the ratio expressed as a number, 15. Did you know that secret? What about the ratio in 1960? Do you want to work this one out? Again, we're talking about the ratio of people to televisions. So we divide the people, the population, by the TVs. This one is fairly simple, 1,500 divided by 150 is 10. So we've expressed the ratio as a number. So the ratio in 1955 was 15, the ratio in 1960 is 10, and now all we have to do is find out what the percentage decrease is. This is something you definitely should know for data interpretation, and indeed all the GRE. Any percent change question is new minus original divided by the original times 100. New minus original divided by the original. It's that denominator that people get wrong. They often divide by the new. We're talking about going from 1955 to 1960. 
So the new is 1960, the old, the original was 1955. 10 minus 15 is minus 5 divided by 15. So minus 5 over 15, which is minus 1 third, which is negative 0 0.333, 33%. The negative just indicates it's a percent decrease. We don't have to worry about the negative. The ratio expressed as a number using our tip has decreased by 33%. And let's quickly check the answer. It said do it to the nearest integer. So we're doing 33 rather than 33.33. And let's check that is indeed correct, 33%. So what have we learned from this video? We've learned, first of all, that basic percentages are really essential to getting data interpretation questions right at the easy to medium level and even at the hard level. You have to know your percentages and ideally your percentage shortcuts, including using the keyboard on the calculator. Secondly, we've learned not ever to be intimidated by complicated looking graphs and lots of words. The more complicated it looks, chances are the easier the actual math is, as we saw here. And finally, we've learned a special trick just for this video, which is that you can express a ratio as a number by dividing the two amounts in the order that they ask you. People to televisions, you do people divided by televisions. Really hope you liked this video, including Annika, and see you in the next one.